Welcome back to another CLR Reddit read. In these videos, I just take some of these stories and testimonies that I see on this public forum in Reddit, maybe some other places. I read them, give my thoughts, and reply to them here on the video as much as I can, at least. Today I have a couple, maybe three that I wanna read. The first one is pretty long, I'm gonna jump straight into it, and it's titled, why are so many Americans seemingly piss poor when they have a much higher disposable income than Europeans? So this person says, I keep hearing stories about Americans needing second jobs and living paycheck to paycheck, but the median disposable income is a lot higher than countries like France and Germany and just below Scandinavia. There's a response to that directly is what I'm actually going to read. It's pretty long, but it goes like this. I've been to almost every EU country too. I'm going to speak of Europe generally for the purposes of answering the question. I should also say that this is an actual great question. I agree. So a couple of reasons come to mind for this person. First one is they're all in bullet point format. So America is a pretty unequal society compared to other OECD countries. I think only Mexico and Chile were worse. Just in my experience, I did not see the levels of inequality, inequality seen in the US in either Ireland, Spain, or South Korea. I just ate and I burned my tongue. So if I sound a little weird, it's because my tongue is sore because I ate my food too hot. Europeans live with their parents for much longer. This removes a lot of financial pressure that many Americans when it comes to I'm assuming they're saying that many Americans face when it comes to housing. There is a major stigma for living at home in the US. Although it's starting to change, especially in really expensive cities like New York City, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. I, for one, never understood this. I am not one who, who was gonna be uh, following that. I got two daughters of my own. One is 17 now, the other is 14 but my 17 year old is still making up her mind. I'm still teaching her things. She's still learning. There is no way, personally, I guess I'll just speak from my personal experience that I think she'll be ready to tackle life and the world in the next year. And in many cases back in, back in the US, when parents' offspring turn 18, that's around the time they're just like, oh, it's time for you to get out there and take care of yourself and, and good luck. I, I just can't see myself doing that. I mean. I brought them here, you know, I, I can't expect them to have everything figured out by the time they turn 18. Did any of you, most of you, I, I would argue, did you have it figured out at 18? No, you didn't. And I wouldn't want my children to go out there and if I can avoid them seeing and experiencing some of the terrible things that I had to see and experience, if I can help them avoid that and skip the hurdle a little bit, I'm gonna do that. So moving on. This leads to my next point, which is housing is expensive and getting more expensive in the US. Of course, housing in Europe is also expensive and in many cases more expensive than the US when accounting for income. But without the stigma of living at home, there is less of a need for a second job. Americans also have kids way earlier than Europeans. Perhaps. The U.S. has one of the lowest ages for first-time mothers in the OECD, if I remember correctly. Way more teenage pregnancies in the U.S. Having kids young is a very bad financial decision, in my honest opinion, because kids are expensive and kids take up a lot of time to take care of. Time that would be much better spent getting yourself settled in your career. This means a lot of people get trapped in the low paying jobs because they don't have the time resources to get out of it because all of it is, all of their time and resources is going to their kids essentially. I'm, I'm yes and no with this. It all depends. Um, if you're male or female, it, it, it's gonna matter. You know, I'm not gonna get all into it, but if you're male or female, it's going to matter whether or not you're spending your time wisely having kids at a younger age. Now, I wouldn't say at an age where, you know, of adolescence or school age, like high school, college, that you, we can manipulate that a little bit. Um, but high school age, teen years, I would say not so much, whether you're male or female. And it also depends on your background, what you come from, your lineage, all that stuff matters. It's a lot of things we can, we can throw into here that would change the outcome of what it would look like having kids early or not. Moving on, Americans are pretty materialistic. Yes, for sure. 
and prone to spending their money on all sorts of sh they don't need. A lot of Americans also get themselves into bad debt situations without any plan to pay it off. For what it's worth, Americans can also be equally brilliant about managing money and growing wealth. And America has a lot more ways to build wealth than countries in the EU do. This is because of the capitalistic background of America. Everybody knows it. We don't need to drive it into the ground. Everybody is essentially raised one way or another on you need to get money. OK, that's just a common thing in America. This is one of the main reasons I won't move back to Europe anytime soon. And for what it's worth, from living for four years in Seoul, I can also say that Koreans are way worse about managing finances and way more materialistic than Americans are. That's crazy. I wouldn't have guessed that. That's insane. That's an interesting piece of information I just learned. How about you? America also doesn't have as strong a safety net as many European countries. That is definitely true. Yes, there is public medical insurance and food stamps for the really poor, but the income cutoffs cutoffs are pretty low. So there are still a lot of poor people who are basically completely re responsible for themselves. The people who can't do it with so little resources either end up homeless or back with their folks anyway, sometimes even friends. This is how that comes about. Crappy public transportation in large cities. Besides New York City, there is really no metro area with public transportation that can compete with what you find in European cities. Very true. That means a lot more people rely on their cars, which adds to their expenses in most cases. Yes. And that's another thing about me being over here in Europe. Uh, I've picked up on the idea that I'm OK with never owning a car again. Never. I am totally fine. I've given up everything that comes with owning a vehicle and I couldn't be happier. I'm not paying for no gas at no point. I'm not registering nothing every year. I'm not paying for no routine maintenance and oil changes. I'm not paying for repairs. I'm not stressed out getting on the road, having to go long distances. Just everything that comes. I don't have a car note. Everything that comes with owning a car. I've turned my back on and I'm happy to have done so. I passed it on to my girls. We live in a place where they really don't, they have that option. Uh, lastly, lastly, Americans also tend to really look down on those who don't make a lot of money. And that is what I hate. Much more than Europeans, especially Western Europeans. So anytime something gets proposed to help ordinary workers, it gets a lot of pushback. Makers versus takers discourse is an example of what they're saying. I live in San Francisco and well-off liberals, while better, are still pretty bad too. In my experience, the more openly someone is on social media, the more likely it is that they look down on or are super conceited toward non-professional workers. Highly paid, highly educated urban professionals tend to get outsides, outsized attention in the Democratic Party. And this is one of the reasons why culture war issues are often front and center in progressive American discourse and economic issues are not since economic issues don't matter as much for them. So this causes the problem to fester and never get fixed. This is a very commendable take on the question of why Americans often tend to seemingly say they're poor when they have a much higher disposable income than Europeans. A lot of this I can, I can agree with and I can get on board with. Can't say that they're wrong because this might be what they see in their lives. Next, read. All right, this one has the title of Europeans saying it's entitled for Americans to move abroad for work. And the example given here is written, was called Norway versus Netherlands go. And I guess somebody is trying to decide if they should go to the to Norway or the Netherlands for a job. An American is trying to decide that. But let's read it. An American in tech considering the move abroad. We love Norway, particularly for social safety, but the Netherlands seems to have more jobs. Thanks. And I guess that was it for that. And they just want us want people to discuss it. Here is a comment or two from somebody responding directly to that. OK, this person says what you need to consider first is whether you can actually move to either country. For U.S. citizens, it's not like you can just show up and find a job. Start by looking into both countries' visa and work permit and residency requirement requirements. While you may spend 90 days as a visitor without applying for it, actually living and working there is a very different matter. 
that's very true for here in Germany too. This can be a complicated and challenging process. It will not be easy unless you get sponsored by an employer. Being sponsored by an employer does make it significantly easier. It, easy. it cuts out a lot of the documentation, filing and collecting and a bureaucracy that could over, overwhelm you here and just burden you down. Uh, so I'm assuming it might be the same way according to what this person is saying when trying to go to either the Netherlands or Norway. Uh, if you've already done that, all good. Focus on picking a country based on your preferences. Both are great countries. Norway will have more spectacular nature and more variety throughout the country. The Netherlands will have cooler cities and much easier connections to the rest of Europe. Norway is cold, bleak, and dark for large parts of the year. That's a huge turn away for a lot of Americans. Uh, Netherlands will have more, will have a more forgiving climate. In both countries, all systems work well, and both countries have good social security systems. But as others have said, how much access you actually get to those might depend on your status while in the country. 100% true. So that was a very constructive reply to the person that was looking to get some discourse on deciding to move to the Netherlands or Norway. Here's where things get funny. American citizens, always think that they are allowed to work and live anywhere in the world. The feelings of always being entitled. Yikes. Well, in my personal opinion, I don't think that last reply was warranted because the person was just asking if anybody had something constructive in the decision. They weren't trying to force their way into anything. They're doing everything in the, in the legit way, the proper way it didn't seem to me like it was any kind of entitlement at all. So comment was kind of crazy, but someone replied to it. An American is simply asking for advice as to which country is better for an American to move to for overseas work and wants to find out the differences between two countries. It's a simple question. Then someone has to come in and act like Americans are entitled because they have a successful career that is in high demand in nearly every single country on Earth. Now, I don't know what the job is um, specifically, but those were my thoughts on that when I read that. And I was just like, why go off the deep end? To me, that was just a little bit of projecting. And it seemed that that person just doesn't want Americans to do anything. If you hate Americans, it's better to just be upfront and be honest and just say that than to try to mask it behind something like that where you feel like you know what you're talking about and you just sound stupid. One more reply to the negative reply. Uh, it's quoted, so you got to follow along. The person is giving a trolling example of how this went. You dumb, savage Americans have such a primitive country. It's a shithole, that America. Okay, well, I, I moved to your country. I've got a good skill set to work there. No, 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 you idiot. Don't come to my country. That's so entitled of you. Why do Americans think they can just do whatever they want? <laughs> That's how that went. Oh man, okay, let's move on to the next read, the last read, and it's not so much a read as it is, well, I guess it is a read, but it's a bunch of screenshots as well. This one is titled, Europeans complaining about something as minor as Americans saying Euro summer. Now, I never, had, I never heard anybody say Euro summer, but I guess it's been said. And so let's look at some, let's flip through some of these. So the first slide says, every time an American says Euro summer, a small part of me dies. What the frick is a Euro summer? I, I mean, does that need to get that much attention? Really? It doesn't. If you're, if, if you don't have anything going on in your life, that's something like that bothers you and you're wasting time with that, that disturbs your peace for the day. You got bigger problems than uh, two words. Euro summer. You got way bigger problems, my dear, but let's look at some of the comments. So someone says, do y'all have real problems? <laughs> That's funny. So what else is like, uh, it's when someone spends their summer in multiple European countries. I hope that helps. And then underneath it says, I wouldn't call it a North American summer if I'm going to the US or Mexico. And then this person says, why not? My friend from back home in Europe did say she was going to have an American summer when she came to visit me. It's a pretty common thing to say. Someone else says, I don't know, maybe a summer in Europe is what Euro summer means. 
So one underneath says, in France, Italy, and Spain, an asterisk, I don't know why. And the next person says, those are countries in Europe. Yes, those are three countries from the 50 that are available in Europe. I hope that helps. And I bet they thought they ate on that. I bet they thought they were really getting off. But the next person cleans them right up and says, you're still going to Europe and referring to the continent of Europe, which you are vacationing in. I beg you guys, please have real issues and experience joy. Facts. I mean, just cause you name three of the European countries doesn't mean that person isn't going to Europe. They cannot go to any of those and still be having a European summer or Euro summer as it were. Europeans come to the US and say they're going to America when in reality, they're only visiting New York City or LA. They should say the state then instead. I hope this helps as well. So it's just a bunch of back and forth banter now in the comments and I just find it interesting how people just find the smallest thing to be upset over a, an American person over. With all the complaining and the down putting that you do, I, understand, I don't understand why they get so much of your attention, why an American would get so much of your, of your attention, but that's just me. And not for nothing, this does kind of remind me of a couple of situations personal to me. There was a point when we first moved here, when my kids went to a different school, where one of the teachers during their meal times or lunchtime or whatever it was, saw my daughter pick up a, a french fry, a pomace, with her finger, and then decided to tell her, here in Europe, we don't pick it up with our fingers. Like, why do you care? The fact that she ate a palm as a French fry, a kid who was like 12, 11 or something like that, grabbed the French fry with her fingers. Why does that matter to your life at all? There's some kids who come from other countries where they use chopsticks and you'll see them use chopsticks. Are you gonna tell them here we use fork? Why did it matter how that kid ate that fry? Did you know that when that kid is at home, they probably do that all the time and guess what? it still doesn't affect your life. You don't even know. I thought that was unnecessary. Another example is right here on this channel in comment sections. Oftentimes, I get all kinds of nitpicky things. Instead of just saying, I don't like you, and I don't like the way you talk, and I don't like the way you dress, they'll find this little bitty thing to make a big thing out of just to put me down or just to knock me down a few notches because they don't like me and it's the nitpickiest things. I can't think of an example right now, but I've seen tons of it. That's what this reminds me of. I mean, seriously, maybe just find something else to consume your time with because this does not affect your life at all. Maybe just don't watch if you don't like the way I say a word or the way I may have messed up something in the video or a shirt that I'm wearing. Just maybe don't watch because you're Stressing yourself out for no reason, in my opinion. It's interesting that I've been on Reddit so much more now. I'm, I'm gonna look in other places for other reads because there are so many places, these, these forums where people are just, there's the craziest stuff. And I'm gonna read them, talk about them, give my thoughts on them because it's entertaining. And I hope these videos are entertaining, entertaining for you. So I'm gonna continue to check these out, read them, give my thoughts on them because it's entertaining. And I hope it entertains you guys. Before we go, new merch. Check out the lineup. If you feel like you want to get something, please support the channel. That'd be greatly appreciated. And I'll talk to y'all in the next video. Bye then.